I talk about the dangers of taking PPI medication, and one of the dangers is associated with increased risk of dementia. And this is found in people who have been taking the drugs for typically several years, and it would be nice if that was a rare occurrence, but all too frequently here, we meet patients who have not only been on them for years, but actually decades. So let's look at the mechanism associated with this. And uh, one, one of the two things we're gonna look at, actually three, is that when you take a PPI, because you've diminished the acid in your stomach, you're less able to absorb magnesium. Magnesium is a very important mineral for your nervous system. So let's go over the, the things that it does. It's essential for producing neurotransmitters, one of which is GABA. And with GABA being low, due to magnesium being low, you're more likely to experience not just anxiety and insomnia, but cognitive dysfunction. In other words, the way your brain functions is um, is diminished because of this deficiency. Magnesium is also anti-inflammatory. And as you may know, inflammation is not just the root cause of most diseases you're trying to avoid, but inflammation to the brain is, is very, um, well, I want to say inflammatory. It's, it's very damaging to how the nerves function. And um, you can get what's called oxidative damage to your nerve tissue and also reduced blood flow to your nerves. So people talk about oxidative stress and what does that mean? The easiest way to think about it is rust on metal. And in this case, the metal is, is your body. So this oxidation creates damage to your cells, to your DNA, and to the very tissues of your body, leading to heart disease, Alzheimer's, cancer, etc. So oxidative stress, oxidative damage is um, very damaging regardless of, of where it's happening. But when you have a magnesium deficiency, it's more likely to happen in your nerves. Um, magnesium also plays a role in the electrical stability of your nerves. So uh, when it's low, nerves can get overstimulated and you can get twitching, tremors, even seizures. So um, you've maybe heard of magnesium as something that relaxes you and calms you. Uh, so that's sort of how we think about it as an overview and in a generality. But then it has these very specific functions when it comes to your brain and nervous system. So the next um, aspect we're gonna look at associated with PPIs is that it diminishes your vitamin B12 absorption. And B12, when low, it impairs something called methylation, which causes neuroinflammation again and increases your risk of stroke as well as Alzheimer's disease. B12 also literally insulates your nerves and so if it's low, it's disrupting the signaling of your nerves. We don't tend to think enough about how our nerves, which travel everywhere, there's so many, I'm not even gonna state how many miles of nerves we have because I didn't look it up prior to the video, but it's, uh, it's an unbelievable amount and all these nerves are carrying electrical current. So just like any wire in your home, that has to be insulated or electricity sort of flies out where you don't want it to. And B12 is, is that natural insulator to your nerves. Okay, then there's also a vascular effect, meaning blood flow. And so when you have, um, when you're taking PPIs for an extended amount of time, you are not able to make nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is something that starts uh, as nitrates in our food, then are converted to nitrites and then nitric oxide. So that's the conversion, but it requires stomach acid. So if you don't have enough stomach acid, you're not gonna make enough nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is something called a vasodilator, meaning it maintains blood flow uh, throughout the body, which is why um, taking PPIs extensively is also associated with stroke and, and heart disease, but it also maintains blood flow to the brain. So it, um, 
It also plays a role in uh, neurotransmission and uh, plasticity of the synapses. Plasticity has to do with your ability to learn memory. So a plastic brain is one that's able to, if you think about it, versus maybe a concrete brain. So plasticity is a good thing. It means you can learn, you can adapt, you can change. And so nitric oxide has to do with that. It also is neuroprotective. Again, it's protecting you against neuroinflammation. So those are those three. And there's actually one more, which has to do with the fact that when you decrease your stomach acid, you are going to disrupt your microbiome because your gut, your digestive tract is, is set up from a mouth down kind of um, staging, meaning, well, we're supposed to chew our food very well, which a lot of us don't do, but the first place the food goes is the stomach, and the stomach has the hydrochloric acid, and that allows you to uh, absorb certain nutrients, as we just mentioned, like magnesium and B12 and create nitric oxide. But it also, uh, having that acid environment kills bad bacteria. And so Mother Nature set us up very beautifully to ensure that any uh, bad microbes in our food, and they are there, they're microscopic, but they're there, uh, but the acid just kills them and sets you up for great digestion because you've eliminated the bad guys right from the get-go. But when you decrease your stomach acid dramatically, like what happens with taking PPIs, now we have these bad guys that have gotten by the stomach. Now they're into the small intestine where they can propagate. They also get down in the larger colon and offset the good bacteria, bad bacteria ratio. So a number of things happen with that. And that is that a leaky gut can be caused, meaning that the lining of, of your gut is not as protected as it should be due to the inflammation of the bad bacteria. And now organisms can leave your gut. They're not supposed to leave. We're, we're set up from mouth to, to anus as one tube so that bad guys stay within that. And, and it's really, you can think about your digestive tract as being outside your body, meaning it's separate from the bloodstream because the bloodstream, then it's a free for all. It's going everywhere, right? But our body is set up where bad guys are not allowed to leave in a, in a perfect world, in a healthy world. And it's just like, no, no, you're bad. You're just going to be excreted out in the toilet and bye-bye. We don't want you. But with this inflammation and with these bad bacteria not being handled in the stomach and then allowing to propagate, we now have a leaky gut and the bad organisms get out into the bloodstream, create inflammation, and that inflammation then affects our brain and we have neuroinflammation. And neuroinflammation is associated with dementia. So that is the whole process. That is the mechanism. And I think as re research continues, there's probably going to be more mechanisms and, and really more statistics on it because um, we know what B12 does for the nervous system. We know what magnesium does. We know what nitric oxide does. And we know what dysbiosis, meaning the bad bacteria in the gut, we know what it does. So there's no uh, lack of understanding there. But the connection between exactly what percentage of people taking PPIs and exactly for how long creates what degree of dementia, the studies are, are a little bit all over the place with that. But if you think with the mechanisms and you know what these substances do as a protective element, it only makes sense that we would see this. And we certainly do see it in our practice. And, and I feel badly you know, for people who have just been on these for, as I said, years and even decades, and they didn't know, you know, and, and there's somebody who had the reflux and, and this drug seemed, you know, PPIs really seemed to handle it for them and they just kept taking them and their doctor kept prescribing it. So uh, this is a, a warning, a heads up, because I want to be perfectly clear that when you're on a PPI because you have acid reflux and you know very well when you try to wean yourself off, because people do that all the time, uh, you're miserable and the acid reflux is horrible. I, I'm not saying to just put up with the acid reflux. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not 
saying that you should suffer and not be on these meds. I'm saying we should get to the root cause of why your poor little stomach is being compressed such that it has no choice but to bring acid up your esophagus, get to the root cause of that so it stops happening, then you don't need the PPI. That's what I'm talking about. Because sometimes I hear from, you know, I, I really um, love all your comments and I answer pretty much every one. And, you know, sometimes people are frustrated and they're like, well, great, what am I supposed to do? Just suffer, and, you know, and I, I get it. And I'm not saying that. So it's not like it's an A or B equation. There's, there's, there's plan C here and it's a great plan because it works and it's no drugs, no surgery, uh, completely natural and it's, it's exciting. So hopefully that makes that clear. If you like this content, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel. We're definitely trying to increase our subscribers so that more people can get this information. And if you like it, definitely give it a, a thumbs up, share it with anyone you know who's been on these for a while. Um, and we'll talk soon.